Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to use a new tool to identify some noise that's coming from the chassis of one of my vehicles. I just picked up this new device called the Wireless Chassis Ear by Steelman. Let's take a closer look. So I ordered this part on Amazon, link in the description below. This is a wireless chassis ear, so what it's designed to do is deploy four remote control transmitters and then keep a receiver in the car. And this gives you the ability to hear if there's a spot on your car that may be generating some noise to be able to pinpoint where the noise is at. So this device comes in a padded case. There are four transmitters and one receiver and a whole bunch of batteries and some cables. Let's pull this out and take a closer look. Underneath the receiver was a bag where there are some zip ties and some Velcro holders and a bunch of these things. Let's take a closer look at this, right? So this is a clip that goes onto some part of your car and this connects to one of these transmitters and then if there's noise in that part of the car, you'll hear it on this receiver. That way you can drive down the road and see if there's any type of noises emanating from the chassis of your car. I don't have this problem in the BMW i8, but I do have it in the Dodge Dart. So this is a 2015 Dodge Dart and it sounds like a whirring noise that I'm hearing in the chassis somewhere. And I believe it's a wheel bearing. This has over 70,000 miles on it. And my guess is that this right front wheel is what's causing the noise, but I don't know. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a uh, bearing to find out that it's not really the issue, that it's another bearing instead. So I went ahead and picked this up because the cost of a diagnosis would be a little bit less than the cost of this device. And I could diagnose it myself and pay for the device. So to me, it was worth it. So again, link in the description for this. It is at Amazon and it showed up after a day. So I'm very happy with this. Flipping the transmitter over, I see that it takes four batteries, uh, AAAs, and the receiver takes six AA's, and they're already here. I like the fact that I could use these batteries rather than a lithium ion rechargeable battery for the simple fact that I don't gotta worry about this battery degrading over time and having to keep it on a charger. I'm only gonna use this device every so often. So I like that I have the ability to pull batteries out of it and replace batteries easily because they're cheap. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all the batteries in these devices and then do a quick demo just to see what the receiver hears when you're making noise at a transmitter location. So I just put the batteries in all the units and I have number two in my hand, but here's number one. I've attached it to the license plate of the Dodge Dart and I just need to flip the switch on and the light comes on to let me know it's transmitting. So we'll just do the same thing with the other one, the number two. We're gonna put it over here in the license plate of the i8 just to test it out and go ahead and flip this switch. So number two's on, all right. Now, let's get a little bit closer here, just so we can see if I can hear it through the speaker. Definitely. So I can definitely hear it through the speaker. Of course, I can hear it through my hand even more. <laughs> so let's come over here to the, uh, the other car here, just out of curiosity, if I hit this, I got nothing. If I switch to two, Yep, we definitely have a deflection. Then there is noise coming out of that speaker. It's just harder to hear over the noise that I'm making. So I should be able to clamp these devices underneath the car in the location where I think the noise is coming from. We'll put a transmitter at each wheel and see what we hear. So underneath the Dodge Dart, I can see the i8 out there. Looking good as always. And this is the driver's side front or left front wheel. The bolts that hold the bearing or the hub to the steering knuckle are right here. There's four or five of them, I believe. So I want to get as close to these as possible without being anywhere near uh, the CV joint or the ball joint or the tie rod end. So I think I'm going to clamp right here. And then that way I can actually turn the wheel 
I keep it clear here, I could turn the wheel and this isn't going to hit anything. Um, and as it rides up and down, I'm not going to have any suspension hitting it. So I'm going to drive gently. There's no need for me to drive like a maniac. <laughs> so I can get this up to about 35 mile an hour and then hear the noise. So the other thing I need to figure out now is where I'm going to place the transmitter. Right here is a place where you could actually tie the vehicle down or if you need to tow it, it's a place to connect a hook. And if I place the transmitter on top of this and then use uh, Velcro to hold it in place, it really shouldn't go anywhere. So let's see if I can give that a shot. So I'm going to see if I can hold this in place with some zip ties. All right, so I have a piece of Velcro and a piece of uh, zip tie and yeah, it's kind of loose. I think that's tight. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Okay, now that that one is set, we now know that number one is going to be the driver's side front. Or left front, I'm just gonna flip the switch on it. That way I don't forget to turn the transmitter on. And that's in place. Now we can go to the other side. Now for the rear of the vehicle, I gotta get way in there to where. So I have my connection over there and I just ran the wire up here to the anti-sway bar and it's held securely in place. It's not gonna go anywhere because there's two Velcro straps running through the unit itself. So can't really slide off anywhere. There we are, that's where I'm connected to the bearing on that side, and I have my wire running up here, away from the spring. So that runs up here, and I just put a little bit of Velcro, nice and loose, to keep the wire running over to my transmitter which is on. So both transmitters are on and both transmitters are on up front. So Okay, the car's off the quick jack. I can then take it for a spin. We'll use this to listen to what we could hear from underneath the chassis and then we'll be able to figure out which wheel bearing it is, it's causing the problem. Left rear. I think it's that left front. I think it's the right front. Well, I'm back at the garage. I wasn't too sure about my results initially as to whether or not I was really getting noise from number two more than number one. Something didn't seem right. So I brought the car back and I switched uh, transmitters. I put two on the left side and one on the right side. And I also switched the leads because maybe there was just a problem with the disconnection. Well, it seems like there's something in the vehicle that's actually causing interference with the wireless system to make it so that it's difficult to find out exactly which bearing was the problem. So this thing came with earbuds. So I put the earbuds in and I could hear the ticking of the, uh, of the bearing much better than I could with just the speaker. So at that point I knew it was the left front and I also, um, steered the car towards the left, which causes weight to be taken off the left and the noise went away. So I could also tell at that point that, you know, it's definitely, it definitely was the left, um, the left wheel. If I turn towards the right, then I got more noise in the left and I could hear that in the earbuds, but I couldn't hear it well in the speaker. So this system works. I'm very happy with it. So the next step will be to go ahead and replace the front wheel bearing. I already stopped off at AutoZone and picked one up. So I'm ready to go. We're just gonna uh, let a day go by before uh, we start on the project because 
oh, it's getting kind of late and I don't have that much time available to myself to, to get it done. So we'll be uh, starting that project real soon.